Yes, today we're joined by the Glens Vodka Championship Manager of the Month for January. Take it up, That's a legend himself. Not much, lads. Not much. Um, loving life as a manager of Greenock Martin. Um, it's been a good start. Mate, you're a hero here. You're a hero here as a player. Is that, is that one of the main reasons why you wanted to come back to the football club? It was, I um, Obviously, I was here for um, a year. Scored the winner at Selic Park as well. Um, so it, it, it was good. Um, but like I say, obviously, the, the pull to come back was obviously to be a manager in my own right. Um, and like I say, so far it's, it's going well, but that can all change in, in the spur of a moment. But you're making it look easy, man, eh? He's in, in a month, and you've already got the manager of the month award? Oh, well, everyone everyone keeps saying that, Slaney, but it's, it's certainly not easy. But um, we're in a good place. Like I say, we've um, come off the bottom of the table, sitting six um, at the moment in goal difference, but we've, we've still got a long way to go. You said you're in a good place. I thought you were talking about Greenock, but you thought, actually thought about football, wise because I was going to say that. Uh, so, see, when you first came in, you obviously looked at Martin's results. What was the first thing you wanted to change? What was the one thing that you thought this team needs to get better at? Stop conceding goals. Um, I think since I've come in, we've only conceded three in the league, which is for us is massive. Mm. Um, it gives you a, it gives you a start um, to try and win games. Um, obviously, we're scoring goals, which is good. I think we've scored in every every game that I've I've took charge of. Um, but it was it was more the work rates. Uh, say, um, I, I just thought at times they were pretty lazy. Um, but we've we've got a, we've got a well organised now. Um, all over, everyone seems to know their jobs, and, it, and it's it's been it's been proven that um, if you can get a good shape and and keep it tight at the back, then you you win games. I know we got it's quite lazy. To think there's anything you can do for. Are you looking for a wee winger? <laughs> We fat winger. I don't play with wingers. Do you know? Inside. Oh, well, you're you, he was the, you were the ultimate winger, and you didn't play with wingers. I don't see what you're winging, right? Yes. Uh -huh. I thought you were inside the park because you were really cute on the ball, weren't you? Very sexy on the ball. I was really sexy. Cultured left. No foot. bad left foot. No bad left foot. But now, I, 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 listen. Throughout my career, I, I played probably more as a winger um, on the right hand side. Generally, my time at Hamilton anyway. And then as the years went on, you know how it goes. You you start losing your legs and had to start playing wing back. But um, so, how do you not play with? Do you not play with wingers at all? Don't play with wingers. Where Two have you got Two that for? Nah, just thought obviously team? we play 3 5 2, so ah, right. we're more of our, our um, wing backs get us up as, as our wingers basically, but um, we just go with two strikers um, in, in the midfield, sometimes a two, sometimes a one. Um, one in the hole playing as a 10, and two sitting behind the ball, where, depends on what, how teams set up, we'll, we'll go with a, a one and a two or a, a two and a one. Um, so, right, it's, it's, it's okay, it's working so far. Right, so talk us through this Morton job, right? So you've got a comfortable job at Livingston, you're cleaning Davy Martindale's Louboutins. <laughs> and then what, what is it, an agent or did the club phone you directly? How, how does it come about? No, well, obviously I'd, I'd um, seen that um, Gus. Gus had been relieved of his duties um, and I thought, you know what, I'll just I'll, I'll apply for it and see where we go. Um, and then obviously I was, I was fortunate enough to get a call to say you've been invited to an interview and then it kind of just went for their side um, got a meeting had a Zoom call over the phone and then a couple of days later the phone man says we'll, we'll offer you the job what is that, what is that interviewing like for the first, was that your first interview for a job it was aye yeah it was um, it was a bit, a bit intense obviously you're sitting there with four directors and they're battling you with questions and you said four of them had their tops off which was still <laughs> Surprised they've done that to you. <laughs> uh -huh. So what sort of questions is it? Just like your philosophy on football? Yeah, just how would you play? What what would you change? How have you got to get us out of where we are? Um, and you kind of just try and be honest. Um, and I was. And like I say, I must have worked because they offered me the job. So like I say, in the rest of history, obviously, like I say, I've, I've come in and to be fair, Andy Millen's been unbelievable to, to work with and help me. Um, it's good having an experienced person behind you very young as a manager, um, coming into your first job, so you need that experience behind you, and Andy's been different class. First, if they say, what's the first thing you change, you'd say, right, you, the first thing you change is useful, put your thoughts back on it. Getting back on, we're not going to go anywhere. Um, <laughs> see, Andy, was Andy already here together, did you bring him in? No, Andy was already here. Well, he, he, mean, we just, uh, we just met him, but we've obviously known him for a while, but I mean, he's unbelievable, isn't he? Oh, he's different class. Does he do all the coaching? He does it all. Um, I'll do some, um, but Andy generally does most of it. I'm I'm obsessed with this. So, do you actually coach on the way you want to play, or is it like almost like box possession, just games and stuff? Or do you actually coach in the, the shape he's playing at the weekend? No, nah, we kind of just mix it up a wee bit. Um, when I first came in, obviously we went over the shape and how we wanted to play. Um, but generally, it's just boxes, possession, and games. Um, nothing too mm -hmm. hard. Just basically 
the way it really should be. You should um, do the one he does with a big line. <laughs> you just line everyone up on the edge of the box and then you just play it in, you set it, <laughs> shoot, shoot, and then go to the back of the line. I think Pep does that for the rest of the week, didn't he? Uh, so well. <laughs> what's, what's the difference? Obviously, you were a coach at Livingston, so were you doing the, the coaching at Livingston every day under Martindale? Dave, well, Dave had done most of it. Um, me and Marv would, would join in when other things were, weren't done, like defensively or attacking. Generally, I'd done the attacking with Davey, Marvin would do the defending stuff with Stuart Gardner, the goalkeeper coach. Um, but Livingston's unique as well it's brilliant Davies different class is he uh, what, is he good on the training field ha, he's Doug, is he? very very good very intelligent coach um, and you can see why Livingston are where they are uh, but as a person very very good right yeah people is wouldn't he? expect that but he is he's, he's, he's brilliant so have um, you took a lot for him in the management uh, more or less I obviously had a lot of good managers I've worked under Terry Butcher Alec Neal Billy Reid, um, guys who are now at good, good clubs. Uh, Billy's obviously at Brighton with Graham Potter. Alex now got the Sunderland job. Um, Davies obviously at Livingston, but like I say, I've worked under Terry Butcher for a spell at Inverness, so I've worked under some good managers, but I think you need to put your own stamp on it. Mm -hmm. um, you take a bit from each and then put your own stamp on it and maybe add, change some things here and there, obviously in training, but um, some of these guys are top, top coaches. Well, he's the best Martindale run. What, what's the angriest you've seen him? Can he go raging, aye? Oh, raging? Straight, st strip the paint off the walls, man. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. Because there was um, a video of him shouting at Ambrose, wasn't there? That was oh, brilliant, man. Was. What about uh, after a game? Oh, mental. Mental. But listen, you need that. You need that. You need to, for, for players to get motivated or to know that they've not done so well. I think sometimes you need to have that other side of you. Yeah, you can put an arm around players, etc. But sometimes I think you need to tell a few home truths. And, and Davey's good at that. He's, he gets them motivated and is a very, very good manager in his own right. Would you be like that with you as coaches as well? Or was it mainly just with the players? Nah, he's like I say, I thought as a as a manager for the coaches, he's brilliant. Um, gave us our own, our own stance. Um, but for the players, he's, he's very good. He gets them going. And you can see why they're where they are in the league this season. Obviously, they had a bad start. But again, for me, that obviously came down to... The turnaround in players, I think he brought in 14 players over the summer and I think obviously it takes a lot of, a lot of time to gel um, and you can see now that they're, get, they're rooting the rewards. Um, take a lot of time for him to gel, he said, wouldn't it, Dave? Aye, <laughs> 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 have, have you got a philosophy the way you want to play? I do, I do. Um, at the moment, I'm playing a 3-5-2 but generally I would love to play 4-3-3, that's the way I've always played but... Um, I think at the moment it's working for us. So, mm. um, so why the three five two then? It's just the, the situation you were in, or about the group of players that you had? A bit of both, side. A bit of both. Obviously, the situation we were in, um, we were conceding goals. So I thought, obviously, strengthening the back line, I had another defender in there with two wing backs, um, but also having that fluidity to to go forward. Um, and like I say, since I've come in, uh, both myself and Andy, we've got now a system that everyone's accustomed to and for us it's working so there's no point changing it how was that because I've listened to guys like Stephen Gerrard on podcasting your first meeting with the players and your first speech how, how nerve wracking is that it was it was nervous but I think uh, once you start you kind of mellow um, and then it just it's just natural after that um, it was the same obviously when you're a young player first time you're ever front of the media you, you're a wee bit rabbit in the headlights but listen it's it's part and parcel um, I've, I've done it for a long time now so it's just that it's just comes natural now so it was, it was fine um, and like I say the group here is fantastic the boys are brilliant See in that first meeting did you put down what you what you expect of them is there like certain things that you demand of, of a group of players? Yeah I kind of said that obviously for myself the, the type of player I was I kind of want to install that in my players just now as a manager and that's one of the biggest things I look at is is the work rate. Um, if you can give 110%, no one can ever come back and question you. And that's all I ask for the boys. And like I say, we're getting that day in, day out in training field and it's it's working obviously on a Saturday at the moment. It's mad that, isn't it? Because it's the exact same group of players. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a different mentality, work a wee bit harder. And look, 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 look and where they can get you. It's crazy, crazy how... Have you got, have you got the, what you said, Martin, do have you got the sort of hairdryer treatment? If you need to do it, hundred percent. Ah, he's got that. Wee, he's in his eyes, isn't he? Yeah. I can see it in his eyes. I remember actually, I went into Mott for a couple of days, and he was really was the main man about the dressing room, but in a good way. Yeah. I see what he would set the standard like. Set the standards very high. Um, boys really looked up to. You, but I can see even talking to him in his eye. I feel if I see the ring hang, he could. Can I think you're going to get it today? <laughs> have you had? To, have you had? Because you've done relatively well. Have you had to crack it? Uh, yeah. I'll be honest. The Rafe Rovers game, I thought the first half was was poor and. It, it did come out, but I don't really like doing that. Um, but like you say, there's times where you need to do it to get the reaction. And I, to be fair, we got the reaction that we were looking for because um, we came back, 
got to equalise and probably should have wanted to win the game. Um, and then you've got John after the game saying, can we just ban for long throws? <laughs> <laughs> John McGlynn, remember? John McGlynn's brilliant. I love what his interviews. I think uh, we should ban long, long throws to fifth <laughs> 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 We should ban long throws. But I, I found it funny, to be fair. Um, but yeah, the, um, the hair dryer treatments came out once. But on the flip side, we should also ban the specs that John McGlynn wears. I don't think they're still allowed on him. They should be banned for fifth ball, is it? See, the thing is, right? I, I, people say you know, that you, you, you can't be like that with players not at the modern player, right? I still think there is. A, a, players do react to it, but it, as long as it's done in the right way. And it's not mean? all the time. It's all the time. Like you say at certain points. Yeah, I think it needs to be constructive. I think if you're badgering players constantly, they'll just go to switch off. Um, but like you say, nowadays, <coughs> everyone needs to sometimes have a wee cuddle. Um, but I think also the, the hair dryer treatment needs to come out to, to get a reaction. See that one there, would you treat some players different on their personality? Because I think that's important. Yeah, I think obviously man management, you need to you need to know what players you can have a pop at yeah. um, and what players that need a cuddle. Um, and if you can get that balance right, you're onto a winner. Because um, I know when, when I was a player in Darry McKinnon, uh, we played in the same dressing room, but it was always generally me and him that got it. Um, because the manager at the time knew that we would take it and everybody else would, would um, come into line. So as a manager, you've got to try and pick the players that you know you can have a pop at and the ones that you need a cuddle, because if you keep badgering the, the, let's call it the weaker players, then you probably lose them. Would you give him a cuddle? Ah, he's a good guy. He's I'm a good lad. I know, but he's stinking. Nah, he's Do you still cuddle? He's smelling, he's smelling good today. <laughs> what is that you're in? What is that you're up to? What you're in? Is it just <laughs> you're in the gym? Is it the gym? Is it? My dice <laughs> See, just the last few bit on the, co- the, the management side, because I, I watched your young Aki's team when I was a coach at Celtic and I watched them. How important was that for you in terms of your grounding that you went and coached kids before you came into first team management? Yes, listen, say it was great. Um, I had a really good time at, at Hamilton um, during the coaching period. I started off with the young kids, um, 13s, 14s, and worked my way up to eventually get to 17s. Uh, but listen, uh, again, my style of coaching there is the exact same as it is now. Um, it was all worked around the work rate mm. um, because I think the modern game, you need to be able to run. Um, be get your head players, listen to this. <laughs> that is important. <laughs> had the exact same speech last week, mate. Yeah, you need, you need to be able to run. Um, the game's evolved massively um, for 10, 15 years ago when I first came into the, the pro game. Um, it's all about being an athlete nowadays and looking after your body um, but like I say the young kids at Hamilton at that time that year we went for undefeated for a full season got to Europe was was something special um, and like I say obviously on Saturday when we go to, to Hamilton there's, there's six or seven of them still in that team wow. just now playing so you'll be, be signing them on the summer 100% it'll, it'll be dying to go a guarantee it'll be dying to go under them <laughs> but do you know how much an influence you had on them it was a, there was a spell of like two months that young kids for Hamilton mess- messaging me Please interview Doug Emery, please interview oh, Doug Emery, please remember that? I do, I do. We're all desperate for him to come on up and go. But I'm going to ask you both of you something here, right? You say there about he's wanting to work hard and players need to work hard now and know that. And I agree with that. See if you've got a player on your team and he's maybe classed as the best player or he's a top goal scorer and doesn't have that same work rate, would he, would he play in your starting 11? Not, Not for me. me. Not for me. <laughs> Not him. No at all, no. No. Wow. Can't hate passengers now, nah, can you? can you? The game's totally changed now. You need... You need everybody working in the same the same way. The same it needs to be the same message for everyone. Because mm-hmm. you take it if you're playing somebody who's lazy and the other guys on the daft. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you need to be you need to be straight in the middle, everyone. And and basically you set your stall out, you just tell them and if they're not doing it then they know why they're not playing. Um, I always think that's important that players know exactly the, the, what you're looking for, the standards that you're looking for, and if they can't get up to that then they know why they're not playing. See, just the last few bit on Morton, so you're saying, obviously the situation you were in, you've went with maybe a different style than what you you would go in the long term, so will Morton fans see a different Morton next year? Is it all about just staying in the league this year? I think the, right now, it's size is massive that the club stay in the league, um, and I think at the moment we're in a good place, but you know football yourself, you've been in it a long time, that can quickly change in, the, in a minute. So for us, it's just about keeping the, the same mentality, the same work rate, same desire, and hopefully, like we say, we get ourselves over the line as quick as we can. Um, but you never know. I might I might keep the same the same shape for next season. But obviously, during my career as a coach, generally I played four three three. But at the moment, I'm I'm enjoying playing the three five two, and it's working. So why change it? Mm. This is the way we went from my head. It's known the sheet, but just from my head, are you um, just keep a distance for the play- players at times, or are you quite full on with them? Nah, listen, I, I think a bit of both. Um, I think it's important that you have a good uh, laugh and a joke with your players. Would you, you do that, always, aye? Yeah, yeah, I don't think you need to be serious all the time. Yeah. Um, 
I think there needs to be a wee bit of come and go with each other. Um, obviously, I've got Andy, who's who's brilliant with him. He's always in for a for a laugh. But I think it's, there's times where you need to be open a little bit, and there's other times where you need to be serious. I think more on a Saturday when when yeah. the game the game day that you need to be more serious. Um, and obviously, treat you on training night kind of a wee laugh. Sometimes I join in as well. So Are you join uh, in, uh, smash people. Oh aye. Let's set the standards side, you know what I mean? Good. Yeah. Was, uh, Does Andy join in? Andy joins in as well, yeah. Does he? he <laughs> was, I remember he joined in. Mate, he was a chopper, Randy Mullen. Sometimes Mom, you would maybe take a few wee touches and go, fuck you, right down the fucking Achilles. Oh, doesn't he mess about Andy, but. Remember he played sweeper for years, man? I played against I remember I was at Mother Reserves and I was like 15 or something, and Andy was. And I played against him then, but it was so. It's helpful, wasn't he, to the opposition players? I remember that. But then, it's he's, bizarre, he's, 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 I've said this in the podcast. I've heard so many stories it was an absolute nutter on the pitch, but he's, he's the nicest guy that you could ever meet. Yeah, he's brilliant. Um, I, I can't remember if I've ever played against him myself, but um, even just now, his desire and that still to play, I think he's 56 or something now, but he's still fit, he still wants to get involved, um, and he's great around the dressing room for all the boys, um, and his knowledge of the game's different class. Must be sunny where he stays, that's some tan he's got, isn't uh, it? Actually, <laughs> is he on the bed? Does he go on the bed? It does mean I used to go uh, first eight minutes. Go for sunbeds like that. Before the game. <laughs> see, see, in um, the same sunbed, do not it? Uh, he made sure of that. <laughs> see, um, we, Andy, I said that we were asking, we were talking about. Um, the people that have had the biggest sort of impact in your career. Andy was one with me. Obviously, six months later, retired for the games. Right, yeah, like. again, so I mean, just want to talk about Andy. Do you want to ask, ask him a question about his career? Like? <laughs> Sorry, Dougie. Uh, <laughs> I'm a top of a sailor. So, Dougie, uh, there's, it's, we done a, bit, a wee interview with Kevin Tom, uh, Thompson last uh, last month. Sorry, I'll take you a boss and maybe set him. And he said that he really didn't take the Terry Butcher, didn't he? No. D- did you like working under Terry Butcher? I enjoyed that. Listen, I was the type of player I needed somebody on my case constantly and, and Terry was was obviously him and Morris were, were mental, um, to put it lighter. Um In what way? Listen, they were just if you lost that game you knew you again it like Terry would come in, then he would go to the dress room, and then Mo would take the hat off the wee black bunny he used to wear. Silly like that. Um and then Terry would come back in with anything sitting in front of him would just get launched off a wall and then he would just go mental. Um, I remember one time at Aberdeen doing great as well 86 minute the ball comes into the box um, try to remember Gary Gary Warren no 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 Gary played for Hamilton as well centre midfielder Gary Ma- Gary McDonald sorry right. header Aberdeen 1-0 after the game we came in usual don't know if you remember uh, Aberdeen they used to have the, the red door with the glass panel yeah so Terry, uh, the two of them have come in because I went to the, sh- the old shower bit comes back through stands at the door volley glass just shatters and I'm sitting at the very end of the dress room where you go through to the showers and then David Proctor's one in Proctor's man I'm just sitting there next man just comes down bang against the wall just goes tonto right through I'm just like ah, what's what going on here I'm like never seen anything like this before my life so I'm just wow. trying to not make eye contact because he was that scary but a great great coach Um wow. Was Proctor green? Oh, he just went white. Ghost <laughs> Casper. I'm like, oh, Proctor, you alright, sir? He slipped up straight in the bin. They're not uh, going in the bag, they're going straight in the bin. But it was just the size of the guy. And obviously, he, Captain England, Captain of Rangers, like the respect the guy had and the aura that he brought with him. Um, but like, you would never you would never answer them back. Did he ever do the thing with you if you were an animal? What, what animal would you be? Uh, I think so. I, I think so. Uh, I, I've I heard that so. one. And also, if you could be anyone in the world, who would it be? Who would it be? Yeah, yeah. He came out with him before. <laughs> um, but like I say, the two of them are brilliant. But you, you, in a dress room, when, it was, when you lost, you knew just get a heat down. Don't make eye contact, just take it. And did um, you ever get it off him personally? I did die. So we played Dundee. Um, I'd get injured the first game of the season at Dunfermline. Um, bad tackle, done my, my medial. So I was out for a bit. It was maybe for 12 weeks, come back after seven. So the first game back was the one of the cups, the, the Ramsden's Cup. Playing Dundee at St Johnston. I'm thinking, right, I'm starting. No starting on the bench. So I'm itching to go, oh no, game, 70th minute, looking, come on, gaffer up. You know, doing all, running up and doing the touchline, not looking, I'm trying to make eye contact, not that, nothing. Comes to the 91st minute, right, Dougie, you're going on. Brilliant. Gets a gear off. We're winning 2 0 at half time, by the way. We're now 3 2 down. I'm going to try to win the game. Dundee break halfway line. I think it was Griffiths. Smashed. Straight red card. Oh, no. You got a straight red card? Straight red card. <laughs> Only on the pitch. 30, 30 seconds, if that. Straight red. Half you come. So we're in the hours. 
changing room and we go just that was that just lost the plot right me that, I, I get to blame for losing the game we're two nil up at half time get beaten three two I'm only <laughs> on a part for 30 seconds and injury time remember it's all my fault and then after that it just got it got personal and then I ended up leaving and going to Hamilton oh was that your last well I, that was just say the November I left in the January so it didn't end well but um, would you ever hear go back I, I would hold my own I, I like I, if I thought I was I was right I would I would say I would now just take it in the chin um, but I've got to I've got to say the two of them are brilliant as coaches. Um, mm. Obviously, it just ended badly for me, but um, I've got to take my half to them. I thought they were brilliant. Is there any other coaches you had a bad relationship with? Uh, nah, listen, I wouldn't say I had a bad relationship ah, yeah, with them. I just it just, um, just after that, obviously, I never played much, um, and I was a type of player. If I wasn't playing, I would rather just leave. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of the same at St. Mirren as a player. Started really well, and then I never played. Get left out with the cup final. Um, took it hard. And then obviously at the end of that season I asked to leave, I still had another year left. So I always wanted to play football. Um coming into the game so late as well, Slaney. I, I always had that desire to, to try and do well. Mm -hmm. Um and I always wanted to play. So when I wasn't playing, I kinda just went, no, this isn't for me, I went out. So it was the same at St. Mans, like I say, started well and then ended no badly, but I wasn't playing, so I wanted to leave and then ended up going coming to Morton actually. Um, so see when you say you came in late, so what was your background? So I didn't didn't get a full time contract. I was twenty three um, at Clyde. Um, I, I played junior for four year at Lanark. Did you? I sorry six it's four or six years. Just shows you the what was that like? Uh, Tough. Nah, it was good. I enjoyed junior football. Uh, so it was it was uh, probably the making of me. Yeah. Because uh, you're listening at that time you're playing against ex pros that had come down to the juniors um, to, to, to still try and play. So you were playing against the likes of Brian Martin and, and players like this who'd just left Motherwell. Um, but for me it was great and then when I got the chance obviously at Clyde I took it um, people think it was good good money but I left a job just say 500 quid to go to Clyde for 150 um, but it was, in, it was more the, the opportunity to become a full time footballer mm. which was always a dream um, but in the end it worked out for me other players that might not have worked out but I had that desire and work rate that I knew that if I could get an opportunity I would, I would do well um, and like I say, for me it worked out. I had a good a good career. Brilliant. That's that's a wee le uh, lesson for any player, even doing the low leagues, you can still go to the top. Ah, of course no you matter can. what age you are. Um how is Billy Reed like to work with? Flying now, isn't he? Uh, what, uh, uh, Billy was for me very good for me. Um he was like a dad. Um I still speak to him now. Um but he was like a he kinda just allowed me to at that time just to have like a free role in the team. Um, and I think he got the best out of me and I got the best out of the team mm -hmm. um, again when I went to Hamilton we were bottom uh, the first year and we ended up finishing seventh and I think we lost two games when I went in that, that six months uh, both to the old firm but we, went, we were on an unbelievable unbelievable run um, but again Billy was, was excellent the squad we had at that time as well was very good who else was in that squad did you? at that time we had uh, Thomas Journey in goals um, Martin Cannon um, Mark McLaughlin, Simon Menson, David Van Zanten, um, James Wesolowski, James McCarfer, the two Pasio twins, right? Yeah, <laughs> um, Mikel Anton Curie. Um, yeah, it was it was a brilliant squad, um, and then obviously that get broken up. James he went to Wigan. James Wesolowski went back to Leicester. Um, I and other players moved on, but we then built another team. And then again, I left to go to St Mirren. Um, but like I say, I, probably for me, my best football was always at Hamilton. Um, yeah. And that's probably why I chose to go back there when I left Morton uh, in 2004. Was Billy the top coach? Billy, very good coach. Very good coach. I can understand now why he's where he is. Um, a great, great guy. Um, great coach. But I've got to say, probably Alec Neal's probably up there as my, my best ever manager I mean I played see when you played against that Hamilton team Alec Neal on the pitch mate it was like hearing a manager on the pitch yeah, wasn't it? it different class organised everything in the yeah. middle of the pitch man. I was like oh, what the fuck Pretty high. he was brilliant wasn't yeah. he Alec Neal different class but you always knew he would, he would, he would go high um, and obviously getting the Sunderland job just typifies that um, but like you said on the pitch he just organised everyone and probably he was a great help to Billy Um having someone with that influence in the middle of the park. Uh, he would get on at people as well, wouldn't he? Oh. <laughs> you ever cut a blow with yeah. blows with him? Nah. You did, didn't you? Come on, tell us. never came to blows, but we obviously had disagreements, but um, obviously 
the old saying, the uh, little man syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> but he was an angry man, he was, wasn't he? He's a great, a great guy. And like I say, I, I still keep in contact with Alec. Uh, just now he texted me the other day, just saying congratulations. I'm, I'm happy to see you doing well. But again, he's a, f a fantastic footballer. And I think if he never had the injuries he had, he could probably, in fact, he, he would have played at a high level. People say he was like the making of McCarthy and MacArthur, didn't they? Yeah, he, pr he probably was. Like I never really played alongside the three of them, but he probably was with that influence he had in the in the middle of the park and talking, and probably helped him to go to where they have. Yeah, I, I would say that. Uh, so we see your teammate and then became your manager. Well, he was my teammate. But I left. He signed me, so I went back there. He'd sign me to go back. So, oh. but he was, I mean, he was my manager, um, but only working for six months because I went to Norwich. Uh, and then got him promoted in his first year. I've, I've always say this, and I, I, I don't mind saying it. I think if he'd stayed that year, we would have finished. Top four. What in the SPL? Yeah, easily. Drink. Yeah. Is he that good? He was brilliant. We were flying. We were, I think we were first or second when he left. Right. Uh, we had 27, 30 points. Um, wow. And then obviously when he left, the full spine left because he left. Um, Tony Andrew left. Jason Mikel, sorry, left. Michael McGovern left. So we're full spine of the team. All left. Mm. Um, and they lose four players in key positions that were playing every week. Just it just crippled us, and I think we went on. And when obviously Martin took over, we we never won a game in thirteen, wow. um, but still managed to finish seven. So that showed you the influence it had. Yeah. Um, Would you say he's the biggest influence on your managerial career? Like the managers you've had. Uh, he'll be up there. Like I say, only worked with him a short space of time, but um, he's he's very shrewd in what he does. Um, he's more, I would say, more interested in what we will do in the pitch than what, what the, the other opposition will do. Like yeah, I think that's, the, I've took a wee bit of that from him, but you, sh you shouldn't really be worried about the other teams. They should be worried about what you're going to do. Love that. I hear now that there's no personalities in the game and all that. Is it something you look for that you want in your dressing room? You want big personalities in there? Yeah, of course you need that. I think that helps. Um, I would probably say our biggest one here, probably Robbie Muirhead. Um, he's Is probably he? the joker of the dressing room. Um, Good player, Robbie uh, Muirhead. He was uh, doing it at MK Dons, not yeah, yeah. it? Huh? Fantastic ability, the kid. Yeah. Um, and he's been great for myself and and Andy um, for the goals you scored. Um, but listen, the whole the whole dress room here is great. But there's a few boys in there who are the jokers, which I think you need in every dress room um, just to get them going. Obviously, I remember being at Hamilton. You had Louis Longridge. I don't know if you ever came across no, him. He's at Falkirk now. He's at, no, oh, uh, Queens Park. Sorry. Queens Park, yeah, yeah. What a Good player. What a boy. Um, good player but just having that person in the dressing room every day uh, before that probably Del Lyle who you've got uh -huh. just with stories any stories and, with Del had, Mon Del was uh, never sober on a Monday morning that. Uh, he's different class man different class but just like I say these characters you need them in the dressing room yeah. they are two that I can remember um, and then obviously I was there a long time then you'd be Paul McGowan at St Mirren people like that Kenny oh, McLean boy. like different these boys were brilliant Um but you need that in the dressing room, it, it, it keeps everyone going. Right, we've got a few more names for him, so well, if you could give us a wee insight or a wee story about him. Aye, so when I came in, I went into Morton for two days. Do you remember him? Do you remember I him? I remember him. Aye, so was he any good before we get into this? Aye, he was a good player. Was he? Unbelievable. Yeah. So, but, well, he was, you were in his position, so were you thinking there's no way this wee dick's taking my position in the team? I don't even know if it was a threat, mister. Nah. I don't know what the deal was, but I remember walking in and Gary O'Connor, Rowan Vine was there. I don't know if Novo was there when I, I came in. But I remember them, and I remember, I've told this in the podcast, it was a possession drill. <laughs> so Kenny Shields just paused the drill, he explained something. So as he's walking, Gary kind of just clipped his heels. Oh. <laughs> and I was just like, what is happening here? But, but I mean, as I said, I said to you, it was a lot, of, a lot of good players here, but at that time, I don't know what, it just seemed if it was oily gaff. But big characters. To be fair, we probably got off. We started the season well, and then we kind of struggled a wee bit, then beat Celtic, and you're thinking, right, this is the time to kick on, but it never really materialised. Um, we probably did a lot of individuals, I would say, um, and it, that's probably the reason why the club get relegated. But like you say, we had the likes of Gaz and, and Nacho who came in and Rowan Vine. Like he was, how was Rowan Vine's big time? Isn't it? I think he says that himself. Mate. I've watched him on podcast. What, but what a player! Was he good? Good, good player. Very good player. But a great guy as well. We did he have some funny shouts? <laughs> oh, he's the English, isn't he? Uh -huh. So many stuff he used to go with man. But uh, <laughs> but like I say, we had. Big Stuart Finlay as well, who's now in right. America playing, had a good career. Um, but it was just, I think it was just one of those seasons where just nothing really clicked. Mm -hmm. um, probably the highlight beating Celtic at, at Parkhead 1 0 with the amount of possession and, and corners they had that night. But 
again as a team we, we defended really well and, and probably that's why we won the game uh -huh. uh, have you got any good stories about guys Nacho or Ron Vine nah? not really nah nah just funny like just, just funny around the place uh -huh. and that but um, big guys was, was brilliant um, but I think he came in a wee bit overweight right? so <laughs> he was heavy I'm sure he always had Gucci flip flops on as well can always be you had an Armani tattoo guys well, didn't I, he? I, I'm not sure I had an Armani tattoo I'm sure he did is there any players you played with that were a nightmare for a manager to deal with can you remember have you, you had to, have you had to manage him you think oh Aye. fuck that nah but I could probably put myself in that bracket do you think so yeah how, what, wait, what, what would you do that would annoy you now as a manager have you playing wise were you quite m m moaning nah probably my uh, probably my younger career I before I I'd probably say when I got to Probably when I went to Hamilton for the second time, working under Alec, I kind of mellowed out. But in my the start of my career, I think coming for the juniors, you're just 100 mile an hour. Everything's just mental. Um, but as you mellow, and I think see when I, I probably when you start coaching, you'll probably maybe know it yourself in the coaching game now. But when you start coaching now, you start realising how managers think. And I think for uh, me, and I've said this yeah. to a, a number of players that play now. Go and do your coach. If you have any aspirations to be a coach, go and do it now. Don't wait till you're 35 and say, oh, it's me done, I'll go coach now because it's too late the time you start doing your badges. It's your 40. Um, but I think as you start doing your badges, you now realise as a manager or being in the manager's shoes that, oh, so that's what he wants me to do. Mm, oh, that's why he wants so me there. So you understand the game a wee bit better. And for me, that was massive. But I would say in the first three, four, five years in, in, in the game, I was probably a, a pain in the, the arse for, for some manager I worked under. Wow. Uh, I need to ask you about another player, uh, Massimo Donati. Played him in the reserves at Celtic. What a player, mate. He signed for Aki. Did you play with him, yeah. sir? Uh, me and Mass played centre mid together for a year, mate. Was he brilliant? Absolute, oh, was he? Caviar, mate. Yeah, he was, he, he, was good? he was good. I would say for when he came to Hamilton for the first 10 games, no no one could get near him. And that was him at 35, 36. Yeah. But then obviously people knew how he played and how the team played. And then for obviously the, when you come back around to play the teams the second time, everyone knows so. Stop they just stuck. Playing. They just stuck someone on Massimo. And it made it difficult for him, but he was still a very good player. Did you end up playing sweeper? Play sweeper. Uh, just to <laughs> get him on the ball. Just to get him on the ball. He was brilliant. Like his range of passing, just everything about the guy. Good guy, uh, isn't um, he? Lovely guy. Lovely, lovely guy. Um, obviously disappointing to see him lose his his job at Kilmarnock. Um, but hopefully he gets back in soon. But like I say, I've got nothing but respect for Massimo and, and what he done when he came to Hamilton. And Jason Scotland, I told that story about Jace. Roy Keane. Ah, it's amazing. That's somebody ever we see. Crazy. Jason. He didn't know he was there, he's mouse. Was he? But I <laughs> just but as a player on the park, could not get the ball off him. Strongest so, man in the world, many. Even at Hamilton, we knew just we just played the ball up to Jason and then just get runners off him because nobody could get near him. He could just turn up turn up a, a sixpence and body strength just to take the ball in for us was, was outstanding. But um he was he was very good for us. Um in terms of keeping the ball and linking the game for us. He likes a wee Ali Crawford and that, just running off him. Um, brilliant for the, for the guys as well. His twin. He always called me Ali Crawford. Oh, he's like him, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll be giving me a hard time. <laughs> See, just the last wee bit on the management. Obviously, I'm quite interested. How, how does life change for you when you're a coach to being a manager? Is it 24-7? Obviously, when you're a coach, can you, I, I don't know, really switch off, but is it a totally different life being a manager? Is it non-stop 24 hours a day? Yeah, I, as um, obviously, like you say, being a coach, you, you don't have to deal with the players, you don't have to deal with all that side of it, um, media, board, or this, or that, the boards, um, players coming saying why am I not playing, etc. Um, but like you say, when you're in, when you, when you sit in the hot seat, it's it's just constant um, phone calls, agents phoning you, people messaging you, or can I come in? Um, like I say, you've got to deal with all the players. You get twenty twenty five players that you need to try and keep happy and um, then you've got the board on the phone um, stop with their tops off but it's just <laughs> just not going to put tops back <laughs> <laughs> uh, but listen it's that's why you put yourself in it um, and to be fair I, I'm loving every minute of it and, um, do you sleep less? no nah. no you're still on it? Nah. Uh, but I, listen I still think you need to have time with the family yeah. Yeah, I think that's important um, I've got a wee my son it, it turns three next week so get him into his coaching Boca oh what what a system we've got does he kick the ball aye right, there you go get him in he'll, he'll make him a player make him a player to be fair I'm not hard on him obviously he's just he's just free but I've always said like people say oh will, you, will the wee man play football it's up to him I'm not going to push him I don't think it's fair that you push him um, if he wants to take that path then great if not then 
it's, it's no hard, uh, no hard deals. Have you had somebody come in the office asking why they're not playing then? I've had a few. Have you? Do you like that? <laughs> I love that. I love, I love, Do you? I, I like confrontation, so it doesn't bother me. I've been answering the door for that. Hiding under the desk, can I? Do for it. And they get that. No one. I've had a manager, I'll not name him, but every time, Gaffer, can I speak to you? Right, two minutes, he's short and he's assistant, he's assistant with something. I just want to talk to you, know your assistant. <laughs> I think, listen, I think you just need to be honest. I think if you're honest, then. Uh, as a player, that's what I wanted. I just wanted to be honesty, um, and I think if you can be honest and explain the situation, why they're not playing or why they're playing or why you're unhappy with them, then they can't come back. Um, and I think players will respect you for it. Mm. Um, I think that's one thing that I learned through speaking to other managers and speaking to people now. Um, if you can be as honest as you as you can, in fact, just be honest, um, people will accept that. Right, give an honest assessment. If you're that honest, give an honest assessment. And what was it a week you were in here? Three days. Three days. He has an honest assessment in the three days he was in. No, oh, he was he was good. Like I say, he probably should have stayed. Um but I think Kenny Kenny must have had other other ideas for no, no, Kenny actually messaged me and said I what, can't what, message you, text you? I think it was a message, I am sure. I actually don't know he missed my dad. Would they text you? Shoes? No, wait, wait. no, no, Kenny Zaya, Shield. Sorry, I think this is how it went. Slaney, I'm sorry, but you're not going to put the good to the team, so you've got to need to move on <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> no, do you know why I went through a stage I told you about this the other day? I didn't have any money and I couldn't afford a phone. So when I was going to teams, I had to give my dad's number because I didn't have a mobile number. It wasn't that I would never, never let, I, I would never let my dad speak f for me because I hate that. I was, I'm a grown man, I can speak for myself. But the problem was I had to give these managers not my dad's phone number because I didn't have a mobile. So they would have to message my dad and message me. Oh my so God. So it was what a bit of shambles. Yeah, 21, aye, 21. So I was a grown man, but I wasn't doing it. I'm, I'm scared to speak to him. But what I was going to say, I knew, it, it, Dougie, this is the last thing for me. I knew when I was 12 year old that I, I wanted to be a coach. My brain worked like that. Um, where do you where do you want to go in the coaching world? Do you want to go all the way up to the very top? I think that's a, that's a plan, Slaney. Um, I think that's what you're in the job for. Yeah. Obviously, it'll, it'll take a it'll take obviously results. It's a, a result driven business. You need to do well. Um, but inevitably, that's where everyone wants to go is a, is a top level. So for me, it's, it's no different. Um, but like I say, you need to start somewhere. And like I say, I'm I'm very thankful of Martin gave me an opportunity to, to come in here in my first job. Um, like I say, it's working out just now, but football's a a very precarious position. Great and, word. He tells um, the manager, and he wouldn't have used that word when he was coaching. Courts, didn't <laughs> <it>? <laughs> Sorry, it's Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I just want to ask you one that just came is there in terms of Andy Milne. So, did you know Andy before you came? You know what to bring your own people in. Did you need to sit and have a discussion with Andy before you decided on keeping him? How did that? I knew Unfold. Andy. But I knew Andy from my time at Hamilton. Andy was a coach when I was there, um, so there was a, a relationship there. Um, but like I say, when I came into Morton, the remit was you have to come in yourself just now. Right. Um, so there was no issues with so that. So Andy's getting put in the summer then, right? Uh, <laughs> 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 you kind of hit that one. Uh, so like I say, that was the, that was the remit. Um, you need to work with what's here. But I, I, I have no qualms with that. Um, like I say, I, I was more for the opportunity to to showcase what I can do. Um, and it's always something I wanted to do is be my own person and like I say I'm grateful that Martin have given me that opportunity What were the, what were the team playing under Gus McPherson? 4-4-2? Four, four, uh, I think they had different different shapes um, obviously I think under Gus he had a lot uh, more dealings with like ex COVID etc and injuries um, I'm probably touch wood fortunate that I've been able to pick from a full squad and I've had no COVID issues so far so um, on that on that front um Probably Gus has been hard done to by yeah. COVID and injuries, etc. Um, I'm just fortunate that at the moment everything's going well with no injuries, no COVID issues to deal with, and, and managed to get in two players in Jamie Brandon and um, Big Shug from Dunfermline and Hearts, respectively. Because I'm I, I'm interested in this as well. So why why was the three five two? Did you look? At, how long did it take you to look at the squad and think these group of players suit playing in a three five two? Straight away, really. Um, but when you looked at the names that you had, nah. or when you seen them in training? <laughs> no, but. Do you know what nah, I mean? just like I say, we went to Kilmarnock. Um, obviously, you, it's no, it's no disrespect to any of the players, but we don't have pace um, in the back line. Um, we've got Big Brian and and Big Allen, so we have to try and accommodate the best way we can to, to help everyone. Um, mm -hmm. And I think at the moment the three five two is helping everyone. So uh, long may it continue, but it's it's working for us. We're doing well in that shape. Um, everyone's bought into it, and um, we're getting results. Any other coaching questions? No, I listen, absolutely. I, I think people go on about tactics not, which is so, so important, but don't mistake a personality and you and Andy are two of the best, so I think they'll go a long way in the game. What a way to end it. Are you going to drink that? We always ask us, are you going to drink that bottle of vodka? 
No, I'll, have I'll drink the gin. You just have the vodka. You want a whiskey as well? Gin. You want whiskey? Crack on, whiskey? We'll crack on now. I need to go for a sunbed. Why don't you just <laughs> take the tops off and we'll fold the diet? <laughs> 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 Take it some man. Cheers, Cheers, Cheers. 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 Cheers